Hello, welcome to Vedial Vagaparai. In this video, we are going to see the structure of xenon compounds. Uh, this video is based on a neat question. So, the question is match the xenon compound in column 1 with its structure in column 2 and assign the correct code. Uh, so, we have column 1 with the set of xenon compounds and then their geometries are listed here. And we know the geometries can be found by using BSEPR theory. But then uh, when we have compounds like this, we are forced to look at valence bond theory and then come to a conclusion about the compounds. In this video, I am going to show a simple and quick way to identify the geometry of xenon compounds. So, the set of uh, steps is as follows. The first step is find the number of valence electrons in the central atom. So, uh, this is the first compound that we have. Xen xenon and uh, tetrafluoride, xenon tetrafluoride. So, first and foremost, what I am saying is first find the number of valence electrons in the central atom. So, the valence electrons in the central atom is 8 because xenon belongs to the rare group and so they are, uh, they are completely filled orbital. So, their number of valence electrons will be 8. Then, the second option is find the number of valence electron on the surrounding atoms. So, xenon is surrounded by the fluorine atom. We know as per uh, VSEPR theory, the central atom will be electropositive and will be surrounded by electronegative species. And halogens are having 7 as the valence electrons and in this case, there are 4 fluorine atoms. So, the total number works up to 28. Now, the third step is to add the two sets of valence electrons. So, this adds up to 36 that is 8 plus 28 adds to 36. Now, divide this particular answer by 8. So, when you divide it, you will get a quotient and a reminder. The quotient is 4 and uh, the reminder is 4 because 8, 8 was a 32. So, you have a reminder 4. So, this reminder you divide it by 2 and the answer will be a set of electrons which is called as the lone pair. So, the quotient, the number of that attributes in quotient is equivalent to the bond pairs and the number that you get when you divide the remainder by 2 is the lone pair. So, altogether the total number of bonds around this central atom will be the sum of the quotient and the remainder by 2 which is nothing but 4 plus 2 which is 6. So, this particular compound as per VSEPR theory has 6 bonds. So, it is of the type AX6. So, if it is AX6, we all know it is octahedral geometry. So, the parent geometry is octahedral. But then, you know pretty well, in case of an octahedral, if there are two lone pairs of electrons, the geometry will be something else. So, let me put the structure of the xenon compound. So, we have four fluorine atoms and you know octahedral means uh, six bonds around the central atom. So, in this case, we have four fluorine atoms and the two lone pairs will occupy above and below the plane. So, this geometry which you see here is having all the fluorines on the plane. So, this geometry is a square planar geometry. So, here we see in this particular case, the lone pair of electrons occupying above and below the octahedron and so you get a square planar geometry. So, Xe, X4, F4 is having a square planar geometry. Similarly, let us do the same set of uh, calculations for Xe, F6. So, again, xenon has 8 valence electrons. Fluorine has 7 and there are 6 fluorine atoms. So, it adds up to 42 and then the total is 50. 50 divided by 8, uh, you know, 8 is the 48. So, remaining 2. Again, the reminder uh, you divided by 2 will give the lone pair. So, you have 6 bond pairs and 1 lone pair. So, the total number of bonds in this particular case is 7. That is, this particular molecule is of the type AX7. So, when we say AX7, we know the hybridization, sorry, I don't want to talk about hybridization now. I am just talking about geometry. When it is AX7, we know it is pentagonal bipyramidal. So, 
you have uh, seven groups like this five in the form of a pentagon and two groups above and below so in this particular case this is having a characteristic of ax7 but then one of the bond is a lone pair so that bond which is a lone pair okay sticks out and as a result this pentagonal bipyramidal will look like a distorted octahedron okay the parent structure is this and as a result you will see the geometry to be a distorted octahedron so it it is looking like because there are six atoms around the central atom it is considered to be an octahedron but then the seventh pair of electron distorts this octahedron and that's why it's called as a distorted octahedron next we will see the next compound which is xeof2 here there is another element which is oxygen but then the rule remains the same so xenon has eight electrons okay fluorine has four uh, four fluorines so seven into four is 28 then oxygen is of course six so the total adds up to eight plus six plus 28 adds up to 42 so this group divided by eight quotient will be five reminder will be two and the reminder when you divide it by two you get one lone pair so the total number of bonds in this particular molecule is six six which means five bond pairs and one lone pair so when you say six the parent geometry will be ax6 type so if it is ax6 type just now i told you it will be a octahedron if it is ax6 type but then there is one lone pair of electron and so the octahedron will not be an octahedron but it will be a square pyramidal okay the geometry will be square pyramidal because we see in this particular case the group fluorines are on the square and then this oxygen is like a pyramid okay so that is why the geometry is square pyramidal now let us okay now we will see uh, xenon trioxide so in this particular molecule again we know the valence electron on xenon is 8 then oxygen is uh, 6 into 3 18 then total valence electron adds up to 26 and then divided by 8 you have quotient which is 3 reminder which is 2 divide the reminder by 2 which equates to the lone pair so the total number of bonds in this particular molecule is 3 bond pairs plus 1 lone pair which is 4 so that is why it is having a parent type structure which is ax4 so ax4 means it must have a tetrahedral geometry so this particular molecule xeo must have a tetrahedral kind of a geometry so one lone pair of electron and then you are having three oxygen atoms so this is how the molecule must appear so here we see the geometry of this molecule is exactly right so the total number of electrons in this particular molecule is like that of uh, um, ammonia wherein you are having three bonds and one lone pair and that is why the geometry is pyramidal again there might be a question in your mind how is this double bond put i know there are four bonds so it is a ax4 type and because there's one lone pair it will be a pyramidal geometry of course you have written all the number of valence electrons here so xenon's valence electron is eight so here in this particular structure uh, when i draw the bond you see there are pair of electrons in each of these bonds sorry not on that not here this this is actually the xenon uh, with the lone pair whereas uh, the other three bonds are all two bonds which is six six plus two eight but then you know oxygen has a valence electron which is 18 already you know oxygen has a pair of electron and it it can exist in a double bond only with an atom so the other double bonds are also factored in and this is how we actually account for the shape or structure or number of valence electrons or non-bonded electrons on an atom 
So in this particular case, we see uh, xenon total number of electrons is 26. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So this is 18, 20, 22, 24 and 26. So this is how all the valence electrons are accounted for and we have xenon oxygen double bond and a pair of electrons. So on the reverse side we must remember double bonds and triple bonds are considered to be single bond. Lone pair is considered to be a single bond to account for the geometry. And uh, this shortcut will very easily help us to arrive at structure of any molecule. So in this case we see the solution is xenon tetrafluoride is square planar, then the hexafluoride is um, a distorted octahedron, then we have oxyfluoride which is a square pyramidal and xenon trioxide is pyramidal. So this way we can very easily answer the question in a very short span of time. Thank you.